Hi, I'm Bob Picker. Welcome back. This is the uh, Chilo Grid from No Agendas. And I'm Bob Picker, and I'm joined here with Josh and John. Hi, nice to be here again. And we got some new stuff right before Gen Con. Yeah. yeah ho hopefully we can get the video out tonight. <laughs> What's your job? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get stuck with that one, but it's a good getting stuck with, I guess. Yep. So we got the new, the new pack, which is called... Spaces in between. Spaces in between. The second pack of the lunar cycle. Yep, which continues its moon theme and all the fun things that entails. So. Yeah, and and the biggest news is currents. Yep, there'll be the set of currents, the first set of currents. Hopefully yep. there'll be more. I mean, no, I'm sure it's kind of silly to make it and not use it. Mm -hmm. but. Well, I mean, this was this was a I guess a, uh, uh, a mechanic in the original game. Oh. Towards, I mean, that, that came out, I believe, in the original game, I thought. I saw that online somewhere. So they were kind of reintroducing it, So, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. There's some weird cards in the old game. <laughs> you know, there's one that if you die to meat damage, you actually turn into, like, a program. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, you're like an AI or something yeah, like that. you can't take meat <laughs> damage <laughs> anymore. You don't have as many... It's, anyway, but let's get started. So, yeah. so. so we'll start. I think we're going to start with you, John. Yeah. You get the first card. Hooray. The first card is the Foundry. Uh, refining the process. It's an identity, it's a division uh, for HP. It's standard 4515, and it's very cool power reads. The first time you res a piece of ice each turn, you may search R&D for another copy of that ice, reveal it, and add it to HQ, shuffle R&D. So automatically, uh, next ice, uh, grail ice, um, are the two big ones that you're just like, well, that's great. But, you know, you can fetch howlers with it. Um, you can fetch whirlpools. Uh, <laughs> you know, pretty much anything. You know, I mean, you're thinning your deck when you do it, but hey, you will never run out of ice playing this deck because <laughs> yeah. you'll you'll just keep getting it. Um, I guess the funny thing is if they forged if they forge activation as a piece of ice on their turn, you'd go go get whatever you wanted. Yep, go get another copy. Which could be bad because they could forge something you don't have another copy of, and then. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Um, I like it. I think it, it contends with uh, engineering the future because it's basically you know it's it's free card draw of a card that you want, which so is never bad. It's a tutor. Time. Yeah, I'm tutoring for really good ice. Yeah, especially with the with the uh, the next ice. And it helps you get a lot quicker, yeah. which is what or, you need with the next. If it's not out quick, it's not it's no good. Or you tutor for really annoying ice. Like, yeah. Oh no no, so. we're gonna block you with quandary. And I'm gonna go get another quandary because you don't have code gate breakers. Yeah, Maximize the use out of those. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, th I think you'll see a, some play. I mean, it definitely as more ice comes out, especially if the uh, next gold comes out. Yeah. It makes it even better. The only thing I dislike is that the Grail ice is coming with an influence cost. So I think if you run a Grail deck, that might be your deck. Yeah. For your, your out of faction stuff. But I like it. It's cool. I, I want to build it. It's like the third deck I want to build. Third in line, I guess, at the moment. Well, we'll go to Josh then. You, okay. You get the first. You get the special first, one. The first current, yeah. Uh, the next one again. It's HP. It's an uh, enhanced plug-in protocol. It's a two-cost operation current, and like all currents, it says this card is not trashed until another current is played or an agenda is stolen. As an additional cost to make first run not made through a card ability on his or her turn, the runner must spend a credit or a click. I'm sorry. Um, it's it's not my favorite current, but it fits in with what each HP does. Makes makes the runner burn burn clicks when they probably don't want to burn clicks. Yeah, I'd probably use it more as a defensive current if I, if I had it in an HP deck. Well, it's a lot cheaper than rural valley. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. gosh, that's what six to res and, and all it works on a server that you you know use it on. So I mean, this is a heck of a lot cheaper for them to spend clicks on. Yeah, but if you got enhanced login protocol, rural valley and strongbox. You're, You're going to score an agenda. <laughs> yeah. No well, agendas right. for you. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Then that cost you three to run on this one. Yeah. Strong box. <laughs> Shut them out. And then even better, though, with Highland Grid. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, this, this plays right into my card. So this is a the Highland Grid. It's an upgrade. It's a region. It's three to res. If the runner loses or spends a click during a run on the server, he or she loses all credits in his or her credit pool. Limit one region per server. I like it. 
I, I think this card in HB is going to see a lot of play. Um, I think you might even see some uh, decks with like Stronger Together be viable. Um, it's it's going to be just a rock star in HB. Yeah, um, especially if you put it with uh, False Lead. I mean, you couldn't put the two together. You couldn't put Heinlein and Rule, Rule together. These yeah. are both reasons. But, um, yeah, I think False Lead, you're definitely going to look at uh, scoring whatever you want to score. Because as soon as they start the run, res Heinlein grid and go, okay, False Lead, and you've lost two clicks, you lose all your credits. My turn. Start yeah. again. <laughs> go back to um, go back to start. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's it's definitely a good card. It'll see. It'll be fun. It'll do some mean mean things. Um, the art's awesome. That the art's art, really yeah. good art. Yeah, apparently, according to Director Haas, there's less traffic on the moon, which is an advantage. <laughs> Got a good point. Makes the runners travel harder. Yeah. <laughs> You're up next, John. Thanks. Uh, so we now have Encrypted Portals, which is the first Gen Techie card. It's a 3-1 Agenda Security. Uh, all Code Gate Ice have plus one strength. When you score Encrypted pro Portals, say Encrypted Portal called way too much, gain one credit for each res Code Gate. So, um, it's cool. It's fun. I don't know if in Thousand Knives deck you replace any of the ones you're already using, but I'm trying to think of the cheap, the cheap Code Gates. Uh, it doesn't help with pop up window because you still just pay but one. But you get one for it. Yeah, I mean, sure, you get credits for it. Yeah. Why not? Quandary. Quandary will be nice, with, of course. Um, pay for your mutates. Pay for your mutates. Uh, I mean, you have, you know, a couple pop up, yeah. you know, cheap code gates up and you get three or four credits for them, and bam, you mutate right into something else. It's a problem. You kind of have to design all of your ice around one agenda just to make it really, really strong. We're going to have three yeah. of them, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll be lucky to maybe score one or two. Right. I'm assuming at least one will get stolen. I'm trying to think one of the small ones because because Pup is not Pup is a century. Isn't Yagura like a code? Yeah, gate? Yagura is one. So I mean, I guess you get some little code gates out. Make it makes taxing ice a little more taxing. Um, Lotus Field looks really nasty then. Lotus Field would be a little more annoying. Push it out of uh, Dino Yog range. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, it's not awful. Yep. It's. It does its thing. Yep. It's going to have to be, like you said, Josh, you know, you have to build a deck around that, mm -hmm. you know. But it has some interesting possibilities. Man, what are you, the current man? Apparently. I uh, get the Genteki current. It's cerebral static. Two cost operation. Again, it's a current. This card is not trashed until another current is played or an agenda is stolen. And the runner's identity text box is blank. And we're talking about the certain certain runners. It's almost useless against other ones like noise. It, it could shut them down for a few turns, if not longer than that, since noise kind of counts on its ability to be able to steal uh, agendas off. Well, I think you definitely. Uh, I think this card like this is going to force noise to play uh, currents. Defensive currents. Get rid of it. I think that's Andy in the art, which I think would be kind of. It'd be kind of funny if it is the Andy, yeah, Andy, because yeah, it the, doesn't do anything to Andy. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're 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 kind of semi brain dead. <laughs> yeah, that's just uh, yeah, it'll be brutal. Uh, I think we agreed that it might make Nasir better, <laughs> <laughs> at least easier to figure out. <laughs> you don't get your cool power. Didn't want it anymore anyway. <laughs> it doesn't really help me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's cool. It's it's definitely Jinteki ish. You know, it's on theme. You know, them hurting the runner. At least the picture is on the same team. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if it hurts the runner. I mean, for sure it shuts down noise. I think it hurts Kate. It hurts Kit. Kit's terror. I mean, you can time that might be Kit, actually, in the chair. <laughs> Just uh, maybe. Yeah, with a little gem. Yeah. Yeah, it might be Kit. I think it might be Kit. A little hair color's wrong, but yeah. Yeah, but, it, but it's got the gem like she has. In yep. One, so it might be Kit. Hmm. But anyway... But because it, it just wipes her ability right now. Yeah, it hurts Kit. Hurts. Hurts Kit. Hurts noise. Yep. Inconveniences the whole host of other runners. Um, All right, Ian. There you go. That'd be great against Ian. <laughs> Ian, Ian, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so I, I get the uh, targeted marketing, which is a zero cost operation. It's another current. This card is not trash until another current is played or an agenda is stolen. Name a card. Any card. Gain ten credits whenever that runner plays or installs a copy of that card. O-M-G. 
NBN. Uh, that's all the, the words you need to say. But yes, this I think this is the best current card for a corporation. It's only one influence. Um, it's going to see a lot of play. Tons of play. I, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, it's a great card. Right, I think Josh is right in that you call Account Siphon if you know it's an Account Siphon deck. And you just get to share credits with the runner. <laughs> so, so top three cards you name. Account Siphon? If they're running it for sure, yeah. Or more than likely. Yep. Sure what, what, what other ones? Parasite. Parasite. You know you're be hitting it. I put Sure Gamble in there. Sure Gamble's yeah, in, the, in the list. Um, if you don't know anything else, Sure yeah. Gamble's going to be in, the, in there. If it's a yeah. Shaper, you can pick Clone Chip, Self Modifying Code, Test Run. Yeah. You know, Fem. Fem yeah, Fem's a good one too because most people yeah. use. But they only use one or two in, in yeah. a Shaper. Well, I, I, depending, I'm saying it would yeah. be a good. You know, like if you got that big ice and you know they need to come get it somehow, you just be like, Fem. But for zero. Well, sure. For zero, you can potentially get 10 credits. Yeah, it's that's great. Especially at the beginning of the game. Dirty Laundries. Um, what else would you say? Daily Cast. Maybe Daily Cast. Maybe Daily Cast. I mean, Magnum Opus in a yeah. Kate deck. The only problem is, is they're not only going to install one of them, probably, unless you trash one. You know, I'd be happy to just get 10 credits. Yeah, finally yeah, get 10 credits. Zero. <laughs> yeah, if you just get it I once. I mean, it's, it's worth, worth the cost. It. I mean, it's going to see tons of play. It makes NBN even better. That's which is Jackson scary. Jackson back in, play it again. Yep. Love it. So this one mine. Do I get the good card? You get the fun card. Yeah. So this is information overload. It's a piece of ice. It's NBN. It costs six. It's a sentry tracer. Has four strength. When the runner encounters information overload, trace one. If successful, give the runner one tag. Information overload gains. The runner trashes, gains a subroutine. The runner trashes one of his or her installed cards for each tag the runner has. So this is the death of tag me. Um, because yeah, you have 10 tags, cool. Pay 10 credits or we're gonna destroy your rig. Uh, I mean, really. Plus, and of course, you could, you could possibly give them tags on encounters. Which is my favorite part. Yeah. I've wanted this piece of ice for a long time as, as a tag. I mean, besides Data Raven, I mean, you know. Yeah. Well, unlike Data Raven, where it's like, that's fine, I'll take a tag and you can have a power counter, I'll take a tag and you can have a power counter. Sure, I'll have 20 something tags, whatever. Well, this now will punish you for deciding to just run through the yeah, data. Yeah, we ravens. put this behind data, a data raven. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's give you a tag and tag punishment all in one card. Yeah, yeah it's, it's how so sweet is that for six credits? <laughs> if you mid season somebody, you pretty much lock them out of the server of your choice. Release <laughs> turns, yeah. For a long time, that's yeah, just it's an overload of information. It's a wonderful card. All I can say is I'm glad this is not going to be legal for Gen Con. Yeah, it would change things. I think it would. Yeah, it would. Disrupt them at a big time. Yeah. Well, even w even if you're running New Angeles City Hall, <laughs> I mean, matter. there's only so much you can you know prevent. There's only so much money you have. Yeah. So makes you start thinking about link decks. <laughs> no, I got seven link. I don't care. Try to tag me. <laughs> Try to mid season me. Well, um, you know, I've tried that. Maybe this is the reason why I was trying that early. <laughs> it didn't work too well. Yeah. It makes paper tripping more of a man. I think I need some paper tripping. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Josh. All right. Uh, Got another current. It's a paywall imp implementation. It's a zero cost operation, current transaction, which is important since it's a Wayland card. Uh, this card is not trashed until another current is played or agenda is stolen. Gain one credit whenever the runner makes a successful run. It's another Wayland moneymaker. I mean, it's it's not the best current, but it's a solid moneymaker card. For Gets rid of their current. Yeah, I think that's, current the, killer. Yeah, that's yeah. I think that's the biggest thing is it gives you a credit because you're playing if you're playing good Wayland and not good Grendel, um, and it kills their it kills their currents. Mm -hmm. Though I don't know how scary their currents really are at this point. Yeah, they'll probably get worse. And yeah, you get a free credit. I mean, the runner has to run, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Reverse doppelganger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can run archives four times. That's cool. I'll take four credits. The only the only one that wouldn't necessarily run as like a noise deck. I mean, where sure. you don't run well, as much as a normal runner, maybe. Unless you're trying to build up, um, Hammer. Ian? Or Ian? He doesn't necessarily have to run. No. Yeah. Either way, I think it's it's a fine card. It's probably going to go in just to have a current. To Defensive fill off currents. Current. Yep. Yeah. Alright. So the next one I've got is a asset. It's a facility. It's Wayland Seal the Vault. It's zero to res. It's one credit. Move any number of credits from your credit pool to seal vault. Click or trash. Move any number of credits from seal vault to your credit pool. 
trash cost of eight. So this is the secure facility that Whalen always wanted with all their money. <laughs> is hey, at the end of my turn, I'll pay one, put my money, you know, keep enough there for my ice that I need or whatever, but you know, can't can't account siphon me, whatever. First turn would be awesome with this, I think. Sure. But I don't think you put any money on it unless they account siphon you. Or they give you a reason to yeah. put money onto it. Because I mean it's just let them waste the account siphon you. There's nothing they can really play that you can't react to. You mm -hmm. know? There's no steal all your money card. I mean it's account siphon but then it starts a run and during the run you can um, put it all in sealed ball. So you think this could be a liability though? If they go in and basically trash it for eight and you have whatever fifteen credits on there? No, because if they can get in you're gonna trash it. Yeah, you can click or trash to get your credits back. So yeah. no matter what you're gonna get it. Yep, which is which is nice. And I mean you'd have to ha I think you'd have to have a lot of money on it before I'd consider crashing it. Like if I had six credits on it, i I'll trade six of my credits for eight of yours. <laughs> Especially in Wayland, because they're all coming back anyway. Yep. Yep. Um that's only one influence, so you can throw it into all kinds of other decks. Uh, it definitely seems like the pack is attacking uh, Tagney Account Siphon decks for sure, which we've seen do just phenomenal. Yeah, I mean that's I mean that's that's what it is. I mean, give me all the tags you want because you can't hurt me. Right. So and I'll take all your money. Yeah. Well, now you can't have all my money. So it's it's a good card. Uh, I'm trying to think if it defends against anything else, really. Not really. Not yet, anyway. Yeah. No vamp. Sure. You can't be vamp, things like that. I mean, the obvious. I mean, Lamprey. You know, Lamprey's only taking a credit a turn, but yeah, yeah. could take four. Sure, if you run four times. All right, on to uh, the Eden Fragment. It's neutral. Five advancements for three points. It's an agenda. Source. Ignore the install cost of the first piece of ice you install each turn. Limit one per deck. Uh. I think it replaces Priority Wreck in decks that don't really care about resing a piece of ice for free because it's a it's a cool power, sort of. If it's che <laughs> if it's cheap ice, it sucks. <laughs> it's I mean it's it's yeah Priority Wreck for yeah. sure yeah no but I mean this it's it's a cool it's an extra you know mm. I don't you know it, you're not gonna build a deck around it because you only get one it doesn't do anything great it does I mean it, it's a cool power but you can't build a deck around it, and you just kind of get it. It's kind of like Priority Wreck, where you're like, hey, yeah, I'm going to score Priority Wreck. Oh, I get to res Pup. Maybe not Pup, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's cool. I wonder if, like, Source will be something later, yeah. with all the Source agendas coming out. Yep. Which could, I mean, what could it really be, though? Because you could only score two One Sources of, before yeah. Yeah. the third one's a game over. Yep. It's you, Josh. All like, right. It's a current. It's current. current. another it's current. Turn. All right. <laughs> it's a neutral. Again, it's an Operation Current. It's lag time, two costs, and this card is not trash until another current is played or agenda is stolen. All, all ice have plus one strength. Um, it's not bad for a neutral current, but there's better infection ones. And then even the NBN ones, only one, uh, one influence. So unless you're really running decks where you want the, the boost in ice strength, um, you could put it into replicating perfection. Yeah. Because you're going because you generally are going to go taxing ice that they have to break, and now they have to pay one extra to break yeah. them. So. Yeah, we're stronger together. I mean, that's another one with bio. I mean, you can click through those, but then if you have the Highland Grid, I mean, you can't click through it. So, I mean, that has some synergies there potentially. I mean, all your ice is plus one strength plus thyroid ice is plus one strength. Yeah. I think I'd rather have the login protocol. I'd rather make them spend the extra click mm -hmm. than have them pay a couple extra credits. Yep. Yep. I like it in Jintech. Interrupt the game yeah. perfection. Jintech. Yeah. And the last corporate card we have is the one everyone's squealing about. Kind of cool art. I like the art. But uh, all right. So this is Willow of the Wisp. It's a four cost upgrade. And it reads, whenever there's a successful run on this server, you may trash Willow of the Wisp. If you do, choose an icebreaker that was used to break at least one subroutine this run. The runner adds that icebreaker to the bottom of his or her stack. Trash cost one. I don't know what the fuss is about. I mean, there's so many other cards that can do something similar to this. I mean, Sherlock will do the same thing. I mean, Sherlock 1.0 will do the same thing. It has two of these, actually. Well, Trace fours. I think the biggest difference though is you can break Sherlock. Yeah, you can break Roto Turret. 
This is the year coming in. So this is a surprise trap upgrade. Yeah, for sure. After they break the last piece of ice, the little wisp run becomes successful, and I get rid of your really cool icebreaker. Yeah. yeah. And um, you're gonna have to be searching for that. If you don't have test run or special order, guess yeah. what? It's not gonna be seen. <laughs> Wouldn't hurt. It won't probably won't hurt Shaper too bad. No. Uh, it'll slow Shaper down a little bit, but it could really hurt like Anarchs. Yeah. Like no, no, we'll get rid of the Crypsis. Or yeah. Knight. Knight. Yeah. That'd be so, cool. so yeah, I mean, you'd have to definitely spend some money to get get things back. I think it's okay. The thing is, is you have to have a piece of res ice. You have to be able to res the ice, and you have to be able to res this. Well, no, the ice could already be res. I mean, you don't have to res. Well, that's what I mean. Time. I mean, you have to have it either res or you know, or have to be able to res a piece of ice for this to go off. Yeah, they could break quandary, and then you get rid of Gordian <laughs> Blade or Torch. Yeah, that would suck. Now, cheap ice, just a cheap ice destruction deck of the yeah. rig. Sure, why not? Could be interesting. Um, so, John. Let's start with the runner card. You get the first runner card. First runner card is an Anarch program called David or D4V1D. So David. Uh, cost three, one MU. Has no strength. Uh, place three power counters on David when it is installed. Spend a hosted power counter. Break ice subroutine on piece of ice that has strength five or greater. It's David killing Goliath. Um, it's cool art. It's Good cool. Sling. <laughs> yeah, he's just throwing a cybernetic... You know, yeah. marble. Yeah, the cybernetic marble. Stone marbles. or pebble, whatever. Uh, I think it's fine. I don't know. There's. Maybe, you know, do David Overmind. You know, use David to break the big stuff, Overmind to break the little stuff. Um, Helps in house when you're, you're in trouble because you're fixed breakers and you really need to get through something once. Yeah, you can run into a small deck though and you're just kind of like, well, that's. I guess you just don't install David. Yeah. So what What are the big guys? You've got Hadrian's. You've well, got Tollbooth. Hadrian's is going to cost you two power counters, so that's going to suck. Um, but yeah, Tollbooth. Obviously uh, Janus. You, you, well, you couldn't break Janus with this. Because you don't get enough power counters. Couldn't break Wotan with it. Why couldn't you break it? Because Wotan takes four. Well, so you could break three of the oh, subroutine. Break a, yeah, break subroutine. You, you, you know, yeah. you couldn't break the fourth yeah. one on each one. I guess you could do pay the three credits or whatever and get through Wotan that way. Yeah. So, I mean, it's cool. Breaks Archer. Yep. Give the, give the runner, give the corporation two credits and break Archer. Mm -hmm. So, it's not awful. It works. I think it definitely goes real big with Overmind. I think yep. you need to Overmind, David. So, hmm, why not? Okay. Guess what, it, what, guess what time it is? Yeah, another current. It, it's current. <laughs> All right, uh, the first Anarch current, uh, Scrubbed, two cost, event current. This card is not trash until another current is played and our agenda is scored. The first piece of ice encountered each turn has minus two strength for the remainder of the run. It's two influence. Uh, the problem is it's the first piece, but it does pair well with Parasite um, and things like that. Uh, and else with Anarch. Yeah, with Grimoire. Yeah. I mean, when you get the virus token on, on Parasite, and you can wipe out a piece of what, three cost ice and speed up turn. the destruction a little faster. Yep. I like that it kills targeted marketing. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> but it's sort of stealing in a But I guess you, okay, so, you know? so here's the question for you. I guess if you named a, the current with targeted marketing, yep. you would get the 10 credits before, right. before targeted marketing was killed. Correct. That's a weird way to defend it, but why? I don't know why you would yeah. do that. Be funny though. Yeah, the scrubbed. <laughs> what? <laughs> Say so. Runner uh, currents aren't as exciting. No, but they're there to kill the. But yeah, they're there to kill the defensive guys. at least. Yeah, yeah it's fun. Yeah. All right, so I've got the uh, event. It's a priority event. It's three steps ahead. It's a criminal. It's one cost to play, and it says play only as your first click. When you. When this turn ends, gain two credits for each successful run made during it. Um, I think this is an interesting card. I don't know if it's, we're trying to do the math on it. It's okay if you had Desperado or if you're running Kinney. I mean, it pays out pretty good if you're running Kinney with uh, uh, like Dirty Laundry and several other of his cards and give him a credit every turn. He could potentially rack up, what, did we say 12? 
in one turn. With the dirty laundry, I'd only want to do one. One of yeah, the need to get the one, full but value. But yeah, it does. It, even if you run one of those and do a couple other things. Yeah, I think the max is what twelve. Oh. So either eleven or twelve. You do six plus three desperados plus uh, a security test. Well, plus you kitties. Could do, you could do three security testings. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you could get. Well, security testing. The most secret you can gain off this card, though, is either six or eight credits. Because yeah. you could still do all those things without, without it being it. there. Mm -hmm. Without it. Um, kind of fun, maybe, with Doppelganger. Like I said, like I was thinking you could kind of do it in a silhouette deck where you're going for quest completed or notoriety. Um, you get six credits on top of making the three runs. But, I don't know. It's when the turn ends, so it's credits you can't use till next turn. It's delayed. Interesting, but set it up yeah. for set it up for a big install or something like that. You just run the archives and bam, 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 you pick it up. Yeah, so then you need the money. It's better money. than clicking, right? Well, but you could also just play Armitage. Yeah, but if you didn't have Armitage in your deck and you and instead of just clicking for four credits or whatever, you play that. You make right. your runs. You get six versus four. I mean, still, it's a benefit. Yeah, but I mean, unless you're playing cards that are going to combo with you. Why not just play Armitage? Yeah, Armitage yeah. is safer. Because take even more money from it. And, <laughs> yeah. I'm, just, I'm just throwing yeah. it out there. Right. You know? yeah. yep. it's Interesting. <laughs> is this one All right. mine? This is, one mine. This mm -hmm. is yours. Uh, we get the runner, or the criminal current, unscheduled maintenance. Costs one, event current, uh, two influence. This card is not trashed until another current is played or an agenda is scored. The core cannot install more than one piece of ice each turn. Um, it's kind of cool. Uh, I guess it blocks silly things like uh, uh, accelerated beta test. Um, but I don't know. I don't. I don't. How how would it stop? Oh yeah, you can't install you can't, you more can, than oh, one. Yeah, you so can't, you can't score it and use it. Yeah. Director Ha. I mean, it blocks. I guess a lot of corner cases. But I don't know. After a while, I don't think the core is really too concerned about. Installing more than one piece of ice a turn. I mean, it slows the corporation down. But I mean, even on turn two, if on turn one I drop one in front of you know HQ and R and D, and then you play this, it's like, well, okay, then I'll this turn I'll put the second one in front of R and D, and next turn I'll put the second one in front of HQ. It slows them down a little, but you need to get a little lucky on the ice draws. Too. Best thing about it. Kills target marketing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so well, thank God you can't play. This can be played on the first turn. Like, yeah. I mean, that would for be corp, corp. I think that'd be a disaster for the corp. Oh yeah. Um, Potentially. Uh, maybe. I think you just block. Well, the only HQ. one that I wouldn't is like maybe Wayland because they always, you know, it's like okay, I'm going to score hostile takeover. Bam. You know, they don't put any ice in anyway. But uh, oh, I think nowadays you pretty much always have to put ice over HQ. Yeah. But. It's fine. It's fine for current. It's fine for what it does. It's kills, kills targeted market. Targeted market. <laughs> <laughs> There's a theme here, guys. <laughs> All right. Next card, uh, cache program virus. It's a one cost, one memory slot, one influence. Place three virus counters on cache. What is installed? Hosted virus counter. Gain one credit. Uh, I love this in noise. I run. I run workshop. So. Uh, this is worth a lot of money and noise. You mean pawn shop? Pawn shop, I'm sure. I'm yep. sorry. I run pawn shop, so. Six credits, sure, or five credit gain, sure. Yeah, so you install and take all the tokens off and just do it. Kill the next turn. Grimoire for, uh, An extra for a seven credit gain? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or six credit gain. Mm -hmm. Five credit, six credit. No, sure. Yeah, another one cost piece of ice. I mean, noise is getting there. He's going to be 45 cards worth of. One a credit, pain, one pain. credit viruses every turn. Yeah, yeah. What do you do on your turn? Draw a card, get a credit, play a virus. Your turn. <laughs> what do you do? Draw a card, get a credit, play. A... <laughs> this doesn't seem very fun. <laughs> well, I, I I look at this card and I say, okay, would you play? You know, if you had your choice because of influence, would you play Gorman Drip over this? And that's oh. the card that. Well, what's what's Gorman Drip's Gorman Drip, Gorman Drip, Gorman Drip is whenever the corp I mean, draws a card or right. takes money or whatever, they get a credit or token on that, a virus token. What's its influence cost? It's though? one. And what's, pawn, what's Pawn Shop? Is pawn Shop one, too? No, Pawn Shop's more, but... It's hmm. pawn, pawn Shop's two, but I also play Wild Side, so it's kind of it's kind of necessary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so you have to be able to kill your Pawn Shop. I, I, spending 12 influence on cash... I think it's cash. Um... 
Anyway, between this one, Garmin Drip, and Pawn Shop is not a bad plan. Because yeah. um, there's a lot of cool stuff you can Pawn Shop. Yeah, if you if you can put them down though, like, like you said, Gorman Gorman yeah, drips a little better right. if you've got them pinned down, though, John. But it's it's also burst economy and noise. Oh yeah, I, for sure. It's I mean three credits. Like he said, it's take a, all the three credits, pay for one. You actually get what gate two? Well, three if you have Grimoire. So it's yeah. it's uh, yeah. easy mark. It's easy mark, and they mail a card. That's actually what it's replacing. I have a couple <laughs> <easy> <laughs> marks, so That's so even better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Always nice to see noise get a little better. All right. So is it me then? Mm -hmm. It's back to me. All right, I found all right. current. So this is the Net Celebrity. It's a one cost current for Shaper. It's again, it's an event. Um, this card is not trashed until another current is played or an agenda is scored. One reoccurring credit. Use this credit during a run. 15 seconds of fame, I like that. It's cool looking art. I, uh, this art I really like a lot on this card. Um, so another current, it's cheap money. Um, it's weird bad publicity. Yeah, it's it's only one influence again. I mean, I guess it's not bad publicity because it's just one credit period. It's not one. Credit yeah, it's just, yeah. Run. You don't keep on doing it for every run. It's only yeah. one at the start of your turn. So, I mean, you get the money back, I guess, when you play it. Sure. If you make a run that turn, it's not horrible. I don't know. It kills somebody else's current. Like targeted marketing. <laughs> Out of all the currents you'd like to see show up. For, from a corpse side, this is the one you'd like to see. It's like, okay, yeah. I'll let, you can have one credit a turn. Sure. I mean, it's, it's, I like it, you know. Nasir, Nasir won't complain about it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, it'll go on him for sure for when you run out of money because, you know, they're nasty like that. I like it. I like it better than the other two. Um, I think it just has a more an all around purpose because why not? It's a free credit a turn and it kills. Their current, so which I think is what, what you know is going to be a big thing about currents is that they're semi useful and kill the other current. Mm -hmm. At least it seems like the runner ones are useful but kill the current, whereas the corporation ones just ruin your day. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm up next. I have the latest product from Lucas and Damon uh, <laughs> the LLDS Energy Regulator. It costs zero, takes up one MU, it's a shaper program for one influence. Uh, pay three credits or trash it. Prevent an installed piece of hardware from being trashed. So we have the Taurus blocker, the power overload sort of blocker. Because um, <laughs> you're just going to power <laughs> overload it and, you yeah. know. Uh, it's fine. You know, if you... Shaper's got a lot of programs that do a lot of random things. So if you have a lot of memory, it's all okay. But it's necessary. It's cheap. It, um, what fun stuff can you do with it? I, I love, I mean, this kind of, the flavor text here kind of maybe references kind of where Blue Sun's going. But, you know, it says, originally not very popular. The regulator was overlooked by those who use energy sinks to protect their rig. But it quickly found an audience once Smoke cast a run on a Blue Sun server, using it to keep her rig online while repeatedly divert, diverting energy spikes in excess of 50,000 volts. <laughs> so I guess they're trying to tie Black Sun into Taurus. Yeah. And the blue, I mean, Black blue, Sun. Blue, blue sun. sun, sorry. Blue Sun. From that's Wayland. Wayland. Yeah. yeah I, I, love, I mean, the flavor is awesome. <laughs> Another fine product. Cause that's what the LLDS stands yeah. for, is Lucas and then Damon's. Yeah. Style. Yep. It's cool. Yep. I mean, it's probably necessary. Yeah. It's yep. necessary. I, think, I think you're going to see a lot of hardware trashing coming up. It's going to be a theme. <laughs> you can't carry everything to the moon. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, last card. And resource Ghost Runner. One cost. It's a stealth virtual. Place three credits on Ghost Runner when it is installed. When there are no credits left on Ghost Runner, trash it. You can use the credits on Ghost Runner during the run. Uh, it's necessary if you're running stealth breakers. Otherwise, right now it's you know, not much else. Yeah. Punch up. Yeah, pawn shop. Get two credits and then pawn shop. Yeah. No, it's stealth. It's for dagger. Well, and hopefully dagger's friends eventually. Yeah. I tried making it in the seer deck with dagger and cyber feeder and all those things, and I didn't like it. I played it for I think a day. Probably need to play it more. I played mine a few times. I like it so far. It's yeah. different. I mean, how good? I mean, how, I mean, dagger's really efficient though. It is so long as you have enough credits. To fuel it, so yep, yeah, because it's what plus five or for something one, like right? This. Yeah, and, and then cloaks break every one silencers for one, right? and yeah. but I mean it doesn't keep it for the run, so it's yeah. very cool. Yeah, I mean, 
you know, John, go through your thing, man. Oh. Favorite card art? No, no, no. Oh. Functional. Which is the best card? Yeah, what, what Targeted functional. Yeah. Or, no, information overload. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> um, like, I think, like you said, it makes you want to still play the old core in the end, just for the tracing. Um, yeah, except that'd be a surprise. I mean, the runner picks the card, but if they're playing tag me, they're picking a lot of cards to trash. <laughs> Mutate into it? No, yeah. I don't know. Uh, my favorite is information overload. Okay. What do you think, Josh? Functional wise? Uh, functional wise. My favorite being an NVN player targeted mark. Targeted mark. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how, I mean, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna break the curve here because I mean, I, I, I see target marker, you know, as an NVN, like I said, OMG NVN. I mean, that's that's all you need to say. But I, I in the back of my head, I think uh, hell, Helline Grid. Helline. Helline Grid is is going to be really useful in HP. I mean, a, a functional, fun, as in functional, I think that will make some HP decks really, really fun. Yeah. You know, um, so I, I have to say that's my most functional card. Here, here's a question for you. Can you interrupt the breaking of subroutines? Is there a once, once what I'm like, saying, okay, like so they've already broken one. Say it's Eli, yeah, and they're like, well, okay, I'll break the two. I'm like, hold on, you break one, okay, I'll res hind line. Want to break the other? So that you force them to burn a clip. I don't think they're. Interesting. I don't think. I, I, don't I think, think once they go to to that, break subroutines, to break yeah. subroutines, you can't do that. Um, that would suck. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. <laughs> oh. Janice, all right, I'll break. I'll break one. Cool. Hind line. <laughs> yeah, because I think I'm once taking you go three to the break brain phase, damage. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. once you go to the Bray, yeah. yeah. Give me something to, to look into. Well, no, actually, it does, because that's the way Midway, Midway Grid works. Because each separate team... No, that that's a, just triggers off of it. That just makes you pay more. Yeah, but but the icebreaker is being used each time, right? Right, but I don't think there's a paid abilities window. Oh, once to, you go into... Rise, once you yeah, start Yeah, once breaking. you start breaking stuff, yeah. 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 That would suck. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Okay. <laughs> I have to check on that one. All right, right, so then, what what do you think is going to be the most meta-changing card? Uh, here? Power overload, information overload. It kills tag me decks because uh, you know it's kind of like a blackmail deck. A blackmail deck is a really fun deck, and it is just devastating. It loses to NBN fast advance simply because it gets outrun. But also, if you happen to run into a HB deck that has um, bioroid efficiency. Yep. You've lost. It's just like, I'm going to res... I mean, they get Bioroid, you know, anything you can't click through. And you've lost the game because your deck is built around blackmail. Well, if you're running Tag Me, you're like, yeah, I have 10. Information overload, trash. All of your programs, all of your hardware, and all of your resources. Reset. I mean, they're done. Hey, what are they going to do? And yeah, they're not... you score right, go... Then you keep yeah. scoring because now they're like, well, I guess I have to start getting rid of tags because this doesn't have go away. Have a laundry away. there as your, as your, as your protection heights. <laughs> no, this is, yeah, this is just devastating. Uh, information overload for sure is what changes it. I think tag me is done. You just, unless you have maybe parasites to get rid of it, but uh, yeah, tag me's, tag me's hurting. Okay. What do you think, Josh? Josh? Well... I'd say that as an NVM player, but I, I really I don't even play HB, but I like the HB ID. I think we'll, we'll see, it'll be nice to see a different ID with HB, and I think we might start seeing that. You think it has a chance to go after ETF? I don't think it'll kill it off, but it'll it'll it's it's another option if if you're running next or if you have some other trick ice ice builds. Well, think about if you ran like a um, uh, bunch of resource ice, or not resource ice, uh, asset, uh, asset economy. Yeah, so economy. you're like, you know, I got Eve out, you know, and you res Eve and you put, I don't know, Quandry in front of it. And they're like, well, I'll run it. Like, Boom! Quandry! I'll go get another Quandry. And then I'm going to put that somewhere. And so long as you have money that keeps coming in every turn, you can just keep putting out more and more ice. And that card draw then probably surpasses the value of ETF. Mm -hmm. And you get the quandaries um, when you need them instead of yeah, towards the end of the game or you just trash them. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're right. I think from a meta standpoint, once you start building card uh, decks around this, I think it will change the meta for for HP. I mean, you know, it is, you know, uh, be nice a whole different... Change, yeah. yeah. 
I mean, instead of just getting money, you're getting basically a tutoring effect. And you get the next army, which is just great. Oh, you know, the next ice is great. I mean, I, I have I have a next ice deck built, but uh, but it's not the typical next ice deck. So I mean, I, I think that trying that strategy in this would be interesting. Play with Awakening Center. <laughs> Janice, let me go get another one. I'm gonna put another card on the Awakening Center. Janice, let me go get another one. Oh, man. <laughs> Just recycle that. That'd I think they out. trash Awakening Center after that first Janice, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think my meta-changing card, I, I mean, I think, you know, with, like, we're talking is, is Cache. Is, you know, or Cash. I'm pretty sure it's Cash. Is, it's Cash. It's, yeah, Cache, I guess, a feminine term. We're French. Yeah, French term. Cache. Um, cache. Well, and Andy would be cache. <laughs> but anyway, cat. I think that's going to change. I think that's another piece of the puzzle for uh, some nice. of the noise decks. Like you said, I mean, it, with a pawn shop in play. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, that's an economy. Yeah, it's a great I mean, card. Banging out, day. man. I mean, that's so, but you you'll drop your liberated accounts just to throw that in there. No, I I'll, I have room. Like I said, I. I'll have room even without that. Yeah, but liberated accounts to me, it's always so slow. It feels like you lose a whole turn getting mm. liberated accounts out. For some reason, I always seem to draw into one to start the game. So I always pop one but, out, and when I'm ready to drop another one, I've got it ready to go. But but mm -hmm. it's still, it's, you know, click, play, you know, play it, take four off it, and then do something else. I mean, it still, it feels like it's like, you know. With Wild Side, I have to build up money early fast before I turn Wild Side <laughs> on. And then... And then, then you turn straight. Wild Side on, and Wild it's a party! Side. It's a party at Johnson Place. Um, I like being able forced to play fast with noise. Between, hey, between power overload and or information overload and cash, I'm probably making a noise deck yeah. instead of instead of. Uh, so you don't have to run instead of tag me, Reina. <laughs> yeah, I, tag me, Reina would die to this. <laughs> yeah, it hurt. Yeah. Um, yeah, my Reina deck is very similar to uh, Stevens from yeah. Team Covenants, but yeah, yeah it'd be fun to try. I mean, I have two or three decks I want to try to build now, so. Um, what do we think the pretty art? The is? pretty, the prettiest art. Yeah, I, th I think, I think uh, you go, John. Bro, I think the prettiest art yeah. is. Well, I think the Eden fragment deserves special notice because if you haven't, if you haven't seen online, it's apparently a giant mural of all the fragments that connect together. So I think that is, I think that's cool, just in and of itself. But as far as specific, specific art. Uh, none of them really jump out. I mean, there's a lot of good. I mean, like Ghost Runner looks cool, and that runner, that celebrity looks cool. Um, nothing that nothing really like jumps out. Not, nothing like no. Thyroids, huh? Nothing like that. That was that was fantastic. Um, yeah, Domestic Sleepers was just beautiful. <laughs> uh, I do like the Foundry. I think it's cool. Yeah. yeah. But no, nothing. Nothing super. Nothing jumps out in the way that Domestic Sleepers did. Okay. Um, uh, Josh, I, I like the foundry. Uh, Willow the Wisp is pretty neat too. Yeah. And scrubbed. And scrub, yeah, scrub, scrub is pretty cool. I, I, I have to say, my favorite though is the Highline Grid. I mean, that's on the moon there. I, I, I think that's just from an art standpoint. I just love futuristic landscapes anyway that's one of my favorites and i think that's just awesome looking it's a castle on the moon yeah basically it's got walls I mean, it's, it's cool i mean it's awesome. you, it's like a city like, what, do you, what do you need walls for on the moon it's got a moat even <laughs> i mean it's got a moat you know i mean it's awesome looking i i I'm, i like you said that's probably my favorite um i would like to see a mat with that on it yeah. um I, it'd be really cool looking i think um yeah. The other one, you know, honorable mention, I guess, in my mind would be, uh, you know, targeted marketing. I, I think just having that, the way that screen's set up and the guy's standing there going, yeah, we got you. We know what you like. <laughs> we know what, we know play. what you play. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it's a good pack. I mean, with the currents, I mean, just in general, I mean, you know, with currents being in play now, I mean, I don't know how much you're going to see because they get trashed as soon as an agenda scored on either side. Uh, well, it depends. The corporations go away if the agenda is stolen. The runner ones go away if, the, if, if it's is. scored. So, you know, as the corporation, you can keep scoring agendas and your current stays yeah. out. Mm -hmm. yep. Same as the runner, you can keep stealing yep. them, you don't lose your current. So, so 
I mean, it's a fun pack. It, it gives new ways to play the game, which is always great, and I love it when you get new ways to play the game. Um, I look forward to making Foundry deck and trying to get Heinlein and maybe River Valley somehow. So do you think you'd run one current or different currents? Uh, I'd probably go run one. Maybe two car two copies of a single current. Yeah, that's what I plan on doing. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, maybe three of targeted marketing because this one's yeah. fun. <laughs> this is fun. I'll just keep it up. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So so when the when the corporation's card current is 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 in play, if they steal an agenda, it goes away. It, it goes, goes away. away. Yeah. If you score it, you're fine. Yeah. The corporation can't kill their own current. Gotcha. Gotcha. And the runner can't kill their own current, so Okay. I mean, just a clarification. I mean, because that's. I mean, you're sure there's going to be another FAQ coming out. I'm sure next month. Probably you know, with all this stuff. And from what I heard, I guess is I don't think currents are going to be actually cards in play. They're going to be a state of the game. Huh. So they're going to, you know, so they're kind of like IDs. So. Um, so they're not something you can trash with information overload. Mm -hmm. It's not an installed card. Interesting. Well, it's not installed. The FAQ already says they're not installed. Yeah, they're not installed. Yeah. So, so I think, cool. I'm pretty sure they're not installed. But anyway, so right before Gen Con, uh, no agendas will be there. John Two and of us myself. Will. Two of us will. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, you know, hopefully we're going to get into the Friday uh, Netrunner um, for hopefully. sure. Hopefully, I mean we'll be up there <laughs> early, bright and early. But uh, look forward to seeing you all there. Say hi if you want. And uh, I know. Uh, Looking forward to it, man. Just seeing all the people. So I got the new shirts too. <laughs> we'll have a few of those with us at Gen Con. And uh, thanks for watching. It's been a pleasure. And uh, look forward to seeing you guys. Bye. Thanks. Good luck at Gen Con.